first memory of having any interest in science um, is probably quite late, in fact. Um, I wasn't particularly interested in science as a, as a child, um, and it was only when I was in my 20s that I started um, uh, watching documentaries about um, things on BBC4 and uh, kind of, I think, like a lot of people my generation, um, when, you, when you hear about quantum mechanics, you kind of go, wow, that's amazing. Why didn't they teach us this in school? I would have been interested. Um, and um, I'm always a, a sucker for facts. And I think it was um, a fact in a um, book I was reading uh, that said you could fit all, if you took all the space out of all the atoms that were in side every single person of the human in the human race you could reduce them down to the size of a sugar cube I went, that's mental and um yeah and hungry for those sort of uh trivia that sort of trivia and facts um, meant that i just kind of started reading more and more and more the uh documentary i watched that first kind of introduced me to ideas of science was on bbc4 and it was hosted by um E, the lead singer of the Eels. It was called Parallel Worlds, Parallel Lives. And um, E is the son of Hugh Everett III, who was the father of the um, multiple worlds theory of um, uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, I watched it because I was an Eels fan. <laughs> I like, you know, I like the band. And that introduced me to things like the double slit experiments and um, interference patterns and, and uh, being a lay person and watching a lay person um, in the form of E kind of be introduced to some of the more complicated um, areas of um, physics and science. Um, it really showed um, the wonder and the awe that that sort of um, quantum uh, world stuff can inspire. The way that I came to write Oppenheimer, it started a few years before when um, I was uh, commissioned by the Latitude Festival, um, which is a music and arts festival, uh, to write a play for them. And uh, they, um, they gave me an open commission so I could write about whatever I wanted. Um, so I, I, I started writing a play um, called Uncertainty that was all about um, quantum mechanics, but trying to use the ideas of quantum mechanics as metaphors to tell human stories. Uh, so there was a bit about a a character who uh, moved to the top of a tower block and he started aging faster. Um, and there was a, a bit about a, a guy who, um, uh, whilst looking after his father's cat, uh, the cat um, die, uh, it needs to be taken to the vet and has to be put down. And then the father comes and is given the cat in a box, but refuses to open it um, for fear that he um, kills the opportunity for it to still be alive. So it was trying to find... Um, uh, using uh, quantum mechanics um, and trying to find the metaphors and, and transposing that into a human story. Um, and so whilst I was researching that, I um, was reading books by Richard Feynman and um, Marcus Chown and all those kind of uh, really great uh, books that kind of introduce you to the um, ideas of science. And it was, it was um, when I was reading Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman, that um, I was first introduced to some of the other characters of um, physicists, and particularly to Oppenheimer. Um, when the RSC invited me to pitch to them the biggest thing I could think of to write a play about, uh, something that kind of uh, suited the scale of you know, the Shakespeare plays that they do, um, I took them an eight-play play cycle on the history of physics in the 20th century. And um, they kind of laughed and went, pick one. And so that's why I picked um, Oppenheimer, the story of the atomic bomb, um, just because I thought that would that was a pretty epic story through his own personal life, but also the the impact that it had on the rest of the world at the time. One of the things that I was really interested in showing was that um, often when scientists are portrayed on screen or on stage, it's often as a wizard type character who have um, who who could who are so beyond the reach of um, other human beings. Um, what I wanted to do was to take um, a character who seems so aloof from the history books and kind of show, show him to be a human being. Um, and I think 
the story of Oppenheimer, his central journey um, from, a, from starting off in a very idealistic place and um, eventually kind of uh, betraying his younger self and giving up on his ideals and um, pushing away his friends and his family in order to create something that he thought was going to change the world. That journey from idealism to, um, to cynicism is one that I think everyone can identify with um, in a small way. Um, it, it's a very universal kind of idea. So, but it's obviously a very extreme example. Um, but it's something that, that makes a character that seems so aloof and so distant and so eccentric and so, um, far removed from people's everyday experience. But it, it kind of brings that back down to a more relatable kind of, um, story that the character. Um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure was absolutely right in the play was that the science was correct. Um, because whenever you're writing um, a history play or a biographical play, uh, then you've got to elide some events, you've got to amalgamate characters, and you've got to um, speed through uh, time in a way that um, isn't based entirely on history. Um, what I wanted to make sure was that, though I may be, might be taking uh, uh, liberties with the, the history and some of the biography, I'm not taking any of the liberties with the science. Um, and so I wanted to make absolutely certain that all of the science was correct. And coming at it from someone who doesn't have a, a scientific background but has an arts background like myself, um, tying the uh, science to the story and what was important to the story and what was needed to, um, to progress the story further um, that was essential to me. I can understand the science when I understand how difficult it was for people to discover it. And um, and there were certain bits that I got a bit carried away in, certainly in the dis the description of um, of the internal workings of the atom, where I had uh, huge, uh, great bits of science that that was fascinating, but wasn't essential to the telling of the story. Uh, so that found its way being cut. Um, so though it isn't a complete course in particle physics. Uh, it, everything that's in there is um, appropriate and period appropriate as well to the 1940s um, that helps pro um, propel the, for the story forward. I think anyone who um, knows anything about the Manhattan Project or Oppenheimer has an opinion on it and him. And I think what I wanted to do was to um, whatever your thoughts were kind of coming in, I wanted to show you the other side. So if you were completely against uh, nuclear um, weapons and the, the and you find the idea of the Manhattan Project was irresponsible and horrific, I wanted to show, well, actually, there are very good reasons why it happened, um, and um, the, these are the arguments used at the time. For anyone who's kind of kind of coming at it from the other side, I wanted to, to, to show some of the other, the... the um, the human cost of it as well. So not that I ever wanted to change anyone's mind, but I just wanted to kind of um, to open them up to, to the other side of the argument. And um, yes, I, I, I'm not one for didactically telling people what to think, but um, it should always be a discussion and open people up to asking further questions.